Welcome to our time of worship together today. My name is Paul Mitchell. I am the Rector of St Luke's Anglican Church in Toowoomba. We're happy to be able to have you with us wherever you are around the world or around Australia or even here in Toowoomba. We hope that this will be for you an opportunity to be able to draw closer to God, to be able to encounter and experience God in your life, to know that you are loved and cherished. Thank you for being with us. Good morning and welcome to All Saints in East Toowoomba. This is one of the three churches which are part of the parish of St Luke's Toowoomba. Welcome as you come together with us to join in prayer, in song, to worship God and to be together even though we are not physically together at this moment. I invite the Glenny singers to lead us in singing This Is The Day. Joy to 
Thank you to the Glenny Singers. It's wonderful to be able to join and to begin the day in prayer and song. This is the day that the Lord has made. We, we will, will rejoice, rejoice and be glad in it. Glory to God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, as, as in the beginning, beginning so now, now and, and forever. forever. Amen. Amen. Jesus said, those who find their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for Jesus' sake will find it. For these services of morning prayer, we use Psalm 95 often, and we have been singing it or saying it in various different versions. We're going to sing now a song called Let Us Sing to the God of, of Salvation, which is a setting of that psalm. night has passed and the day lies open before us let us pray with one heart and mind as we rejoice in the gift of this new day so may the light of your presence O God set our hearts on fire with love for you now and forever Amen. Amen. our prayer of confession when our love for you and for your people grows dim and cold Lord, have mercy on us. When temptation seizes and dulls our conscience, leading us into sins, Christ, have mercy on us. When our eyes are closed to the sacredness of the ground on which we stand every day, Lord, have mercy on us. Lord of life and love and compassion, stir our love to flame, steal our faithfulness into life, Open our eyes to see with clarity today and always. God, who desires our life in all fullness to be expressed, forgives you, cherishes you, calls you again and again into transformed living. Amen. Amen. I now invite Marion Dent to read for us Psalm 86. The psalm today is Psalm 86, verses 1 to 10 and 16 and 17. Incline your ear to me, O God, and answer me, for I am poor and in misery. Preserve my life, for I am faithful. My God, save your servant who trusts in you. Be merciful to me, O Lord, for I, <coughs> for I call you all the day long. 
O make glad the soul of your servant, for I put my hope in you, O Lord. For you, Lord, are good and forgiving, of great kindness and continuing kindness to all who call upon you. Hear my prayer, O Lord, and give heed to the voice of my supplication. In the day of my trouble I call upon you, for you will surely answer. Among the gods there is no one like you, O Lord, nor are there any deeds like yours. All the nations you have made shall come and worship before you. O Lord, they shall glorify your name, for you are great and do marvellous things, and you alone are God. Turn to me and be merciful. Give your strength to your servant and save the child of your handmaid. Show me some token of your goodness that those who hate me may see it and be ashamed because you, Lord, are my helper and my comforter. Lord God, whose blessed Son rose in triumph and set us free, grant us the fullness of life he promised us that through the Holy Spirit our hearts may possess him whom our eyes cannot see, the same Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. I now invite John Compton to read for us from the book of Genesis. The Old Testament reading from the book of Genesis, chapter 21, verses 8 to 21. The child grew and was weaned, and Abraham made a great feast on the day that Isaac was weaned. But Sarah saw the son of Hagar the Egyptian, whom she had borne to Abraham, playing with her son Isaac. So she said to Abraham, Cast out this slave woman with her son, for the son of this slave woman shall not inherit along with my son Isaac. The matter was very distressing to Abraham on account of his son. But God said to Abraham, Do not be distressed because of the boy and because of your slave woman. Whatever Sarah says to you, do as she tells you, for it is through Isaac that offspring shall be named after you. As for the son of the slave woman, I will make a nation of him also, because he is your offspring. So Abraham rose early in the morning and took bread and a skin of water and gave it to Hagar, putting it on her shoulder along with the child and sent her away. And she departed and wandered about in the wilderness of Beersheba. When the water in the skin was gone, she cast the child under one of the bushes. Then she went and sat down opposite him, a good way off, about the distance of a bowshot. For she said, Do not let me look on the death of the child. And as she sat opposite him, she lifted up her voice and wept. And God heard the voice of the boy, and the angel of God called to Hagar from heaven and said to her, what troubles you, Hagar? Do not be afraid, for God has heard the voice of the boy where he is. Come, lift up the boy and hold him fast with your hand, for I will make a great nation of him. Then God opened her eyes and she saw a well of water. She went and filled the skin with water and gave the boy a drink. God was with the boy and he grew up. He lived in the wilderness and became an expert with the bow. He lived in the wilderness of Paran and his mother got a wife for him from the land of Egypt. May your word live in us and bear much fruit to your glory. The Glennie Singers will now lead us in singing together, Be still for the presence of the Lord, the Holy One is here.
Last week, I mistakenly said that it was Abraham man who was reading. It was Michael on that occasion. Today, Abraham is reading for us. I invite him to read Romans chapter 6, verses 1 to 11 for us. Today's reading is Romans chapter 6, verses 1 to 11. What then are we to say? Should we continue in sin in order that the grace may abound? By no means. How can we, who died to sin, go living in it? Do you not know that all of us who have been baptised into Christ Jesus were baptised into his death? Therefore, we have been buried with him by baptism into death, so that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, so we too might walk in the newness of life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we will certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. We know that our old self was crucified with him so that the body of sin might be destroyed and we might no longer be enslaved to sin. For whoever has died is freed from sin. But if we have died with Christ, we believe that we will also live with him. We know that Christ being raised from the dead will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. The death he died, he died to sin once for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. So you also must consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Christ Jesus. May your word live in us and bear, and bear much, much fruit to your glory. Thank you, Abraham. We now introduce the gospel with a Teze chant. Alleluia, 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 alleluia. Those who lose their life for my sake shall find it. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. And also with you. I invite Joanna Dean to read the Gospel reading for us from Matthew chapter 10. Reading from Matthew chapter 10, beginning at the 24th verse. A disciple is not above the teacher, nor a slave above the master. It is enough for the disciple to be like the teacher, and the slave like the master. If they have called the master to the house of the eligible, how much more will they malign those of his household? So have no fear of them, for nothing is covered up that will not be uncovered, and nothing secret that will not become known. What I say to you in the dark, tell in the light, and what you have heard whispered, proclaim from the housetops. Do not fear those who kill the body, but cannot kill the soul. Rather fear him who can destroy both soul and body. In hell. Are not two sparrows sold for a penny? Yet not one of them will fall to the ground unperceived by your father. And even the hairs of your head are all counted. So do not be afraid, for you are of more value than many sparrows. <laughs> Everyone, therefore, who acknowledges me before the others, I also will acknowledge before my father in heaven. But whoever denies me before others, I also will deny them before my Father in heaven. Do not think that I have come to bring peace to the earth. I have not come to bring peace, but a sword. For I have come to set a man against his father, and a daughter against her mother, and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law, and one's foes will be members of one's own household. Whoever loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me, and whoever loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And whoever does not take up the cross and follow me is not worthy of me. Those who find their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake will find it. 
May your word live in us and, and bear, bear much fruit to your glory. Thank you to all of those who have read the scriptures for us this morning. In the name of God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. Where is sacred ground for you? In 1980, a group of friends went to Central Australia on a camping trip. They spent most of their time around Uluru, what many Australians still call Ayers Rock. If you've ever been there, you would know that it is a special place, a place which inspires awe and deep reflection. I don't just mean when the sun is going down and the clicking of cameras records the changing hues of the light reflected from the huge rock. Taking time to sit and reflect there about this place at the heart of our nation is, at least for many visitors, a spiritual experience. That was what happened to that group in 1980 and it resulted in an amazingly powerful song which challenges us to think about Indigenous Australians and their place in our history and in our land. The group of friends were Shane Howard and the others who at that time made up the latest members of the band Goanna. This group wrote and sang songs about important aspects of Australian life, like Let the, Flank Let the Franklin Flow. Solid Rock, their song inspired by being there at Uluru, became perhaps their greatest hit. It explored the connection which Indigenous people have to the land and how important it is to recognise that, as it is to recognise them and the reality of their history. In 2018, it was ranked as number 13 of the most Australian songs of all time. Most photos of Uluru focus on the sunset. The opening lines of that song are actually about dawn, evoking for me the encouragement to wake up and see. Out here, nothing changes, not in a hurry anyway. You feel the endlessness with the coming of the lighter day. As the song continues, there are the lines about standing on solid rock, on sacred ground. For many people, Indigenous as well as those of us who are immigrants from the past 230 years, Uluru and the bush in general is felt as a place of sacred ground. There are many places in this country where I have stood in awe at the beauty of the scenery and felt that I was standing on sacred ground. Some of those places have been dramatic. Cliffs, gorges, coastlines, vast deserts, forests of soaring trees. Some sacred ground has been as simple as a single tree or flower, appreciating its beauty and being drawn into a deeper way of being present. I wonder though, where is sacred ground for you? Is it a place? That place could be where something significant has happened for you, a piece of your past. It could be home, just being there, just being in what is sacred space for you. It could be the place where you worship God, with others or alone. Just as the indigenous people of Australia have dreaming trails, and there are places like the Camino in Spain where pilgrims make journeys across sacred space, some of us make sacred space of the places where we walk regularly. At least one member of our community regularly makes sacred space of one of the walks around Picnic Point here in Toowoomba. Where is sacred space for you? Is it a place? What does it feel like to be there? Where does that take you within yourself? What does it do to you or open up in you in that sacred space? Is it a place of peace? Is it a place of honesty? Is it a place of revelation? 
Is it a place of forgetting or a place of remembering? Or perhaps both? For most of us, I expect, sacred places both take us deeper within as well as taking us out of ourselves and into closer connection with all that is around us. And God is in both of those spaces, deep within and around us. I wonder though as well, what makes those spaces sacred? It's not only beauty. It is not only what happens there for us and for others. Some sacred spaces are made that by encounter, by relationship, by intimacy. I hear the saying, home is where the heart is, as a statement both about sacredness and also about the sacredness of that particular space. That sacredness comes not only from it being home, but also from who we are there with, the people in our sacred space. There are some people who make space sacred by their presence. There are some people who make time and encounter sacred by the attention that they give. I wonder who those people are in your life. Cherish them. In the Bible, we hear many times of sacred spaces being encountered. The temple in Jerusalem is an obvious one, and the tent of meeting in the desert throughout the Exodus, and the spaces where Jesus met with the disciples, especially where they shared the Last Supper, and on the mountaintop of the Transfiguration, and the seaside places where he spoke and healed and taught. Many of those are honoured as sacred places still. In Exodus chapter 3, we see Moses enter sacred space when in the wilderness he encountered God in a bush which was burning and yet not consumed. The monastery of St. Catherine in the Sinai is cherished as the place where that event is remembered. Moses was told to take off his shoes for he stood on holy ground. That act is a reminder that we do often have physical acts that we perform in recognising sacred space for what it is. It may be removing our shoes, it may be lighting a candle, burning incense, a particular posture, a prayerful attitude, an open heart and mind. What do you do in your sacred space that helps to be able to acknowledge it as sacred? I'm reflecting on these things today because of our first reading from Genesis chapter 21, verses 8 to 21. Remember that story? God had promised Abraham that he would have offspring, as many as the sands of the desert, But he and Sarah were not able to conceive. So Abraham, at Sarah's encouragement, slept with a servant girl, Hagar, and she had a son, Ishmael. Abraham was happy. Hagar was happy. Sarah, not so much. But when miraculously Isaac was born to Sarah, the discontent erupted and Hagar and her son were banished as we see in that reading. They went out into the desert and they ended up underneath a bush or in an isolated place. The ground on which they stood when Hagar reached the end of her tether is sacred ground. She felt that life was ending for Ishmael and also for herself. She gave up. She felt that life was over. Then in that time and in that space, she met God. In that space of extreme distress, she met God. In that space of utter despair and abandonment, she met God. In that space where hope 
seems to have been completely lost when she felt herself to be completely lost she met God that was sacred space for her for them I read this story as a reminder that sacred spaces are not always comfortable or easy or beautiful. Sacred spaces are not always the places where we find ourselves when life is going well and all is good. Sacred spaces can also be the places of the extremes in our lives. I wonder if that has ever been the case for you. I also wonder if when you have been at such an extreme place of despair, whether you have heard the voice and sensed the presence of God with you, close companionship, intimate caring and compassion, that feeling of being held at times when we know that we can no longer hold ourselves together. Has that ever been life for you? In this service, we just sang the deeply passionate song, Be still, for the presence of the Lord, the Holy One, is here. I wonder if when you sang that, you were only transported to the beautiful places, the peaceful, sacred spaces, the comfortable holy ground. Or were you perhaps also taken through this reading from Genesis 21 to reflect on God's healing presence in the troubled and difficult sacred spaces? I invite you to sit with that hymn again in that way, looking through the lens of that reading in Genesis 21 and Hagar's experience. As for Hagar... As for Shane Howard and Goanna, and as for many of us, being in sacred space transforms us. We are opened up. We find not only healing and comfort, but we also find challenge and stirring encouragement. Make time for sacred spaces, not only to enter them, but to have all of your senses open, listening to how God holds and calls and stirs and invites you. Let even the worst times be held as sacred space, especially there and then. Listen to the voice of one who calls us into life. Amen.
youth, the church throughout the world and across the ages, we say together, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. As I noted last week, we are in the 250th year since the birth of Ludwig van Beethoven. Today we have another song that we sing using a tune written by him. God has spoken by his prophets. Please join me as we sing together. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Gracious God, we who were baptised into Christ Jesus were baptised into his death. We pray that as you raised him from death, so by the power of the Holy Spirit, we may live the new life to your glory, knowing ourselves to be dead in sin, but alive for you in Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. I now invite Rob Schoenfeld to lead us in prayer. The bidding for today is Lord in your mercy, the response, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we give thanks for the work of your creation, the world, the earth, the sea and sky and everything that has breath. We praise you for the gifts you have bestowed on us and pray that we may be good stewards of those gifts. We pray for all whose lives are devastated by war and natural disasters. 
for those who are discouraged and fatigued by disease and famine. We beseech you to give them peace and respite from their troubles and comfort in their lives. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for your church and give thanks for all bishops, priests and deacons and lay leaders who guide and strengthen us in our daily lives. We pray that the walls that separate us will be broken down to unite us as one faith of love and that we will accomplish your will. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all peoples as they live their life journeys. Strengthen us to provide help and comfort in their times of difficulty, pain, disappointment and sorrows. Help us to reach out and wipe away their tears so that they may again see the beauty of your creation that surrounds them. We pray for ourselves. Strengthen us in our daily struggles. Help us to see how precious the gifts you have entrusted to us are and how they are to be used to further your will on this earth. Give us the trust to surrender our strength to your will with love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We give thanks for your greatest gift to us, the love of your Son, Jesus Christ, and his suffering to give us eternal life. We pray for those who have died in the faith of Christ, knowing that the grave holds no power for those who trust in you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, you have promised to hear our prayers. Grant that what we have asked in faith, we may by your grace receive, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Eternal God and Father, by whose power we are created, and by whose love we are redeemed, guide and strengthen us by your Spirit, that we may give ourselves to your service, and live this day in love to one another and to you, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also, and also with, you. with you. Let us praise the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Amen. Thank you for being here with us today. During this coming week, uh, we will still have morning prayer, I hope, on Tuesday and Wednesday mornings, but if you log on and find that there isn't morning prayer being shown live from our Facebook page, then please keep coming back, but it'll only be possibly Tuesday and Wednesday this week, and then from Wednesday again the following week we will be returning. We have an opportunity to be able to join in a conversation about the sermons each week. If you would like to be part of that, please register by Thursday and uh, Peter Mann will be preaching next week and there's a chance to be able to talk with him on Zoom about his sermon for next week. But please register with our parish office by Thursday. Also by Thursday each week, please register if you would like to be with us as we um, prepare the services, as we broadcast them live on Facebook each week. Thank you to all of those who have been part of today, those who have read and prayed for Peter and Joy leading us in our music and for the Glenny singers who have sung for us and Riley who will have put this video together for us. Please join with me as we sing together, led by the Glenny singers, One More Step Along the World I Go.
thank you for being here. If this time of worship together has raised any questions or opportunities for you, please let us know. Please contact our parish office. If there is any way in which we can help you, both practically as well as along your journey with God, then please let us know. Please contact our parish office if there are any questions or if you would like to find out more about seeking God in your life, please come and be with us again as we continue in worship together.